Hello, today I'm going to be going over the patient portal within Crystal. The patient portal comes with every purchase of Crystal practice management software and is pretty much set up to go right out of the box. The only thing that you will be responsible for is generating a username and a password for each patient and um, also uploading documents that, they, that you would like them to be able to access. So the first thing about the patient portal is that each office has their own specific URL. And to get your specific URL, you're going to come into admin and then website. And the patient portal URL is the second one listed under system online documents. If you click this link right here, Crystal is going to pop open the username and password login screen where the patients will need to enter their credentials. Now the patient portal is a secure platform and so every patient will need a username and a password generated by your office in order to get into their files. So one quick thing to point out about this URL is that um, it's a little bit long to tell a patient over the phone or even you know to have them type in a lot of times it's pretty beneficial if you or your webmaster um, put a link onto your website and so that way you can just tell your patients to go to your website and then click the button for the patient portal and then they'll have a direct access to this login window so we have a lot of offices who do that Okay, and I'm actually going to point this to a different number because it is going to have some additional information on it. Okay, so here's that. And then to generate a username and password for the patient, there's two different ways to do it. So the first way, and probably the most popular, is going to be in the patient section here. You can click on Files, and then Online Portal, Add Remove Files. And then you can either type in a username and password for the patient if they tell you a specific one that they would like, or you can click default, which is where the system will assign a username and password. If you do type in your own custom username and password, make sure that it is specific for each patient. Otherwise, you might get into a HIPAA violation. Okay, so I've already got a username and password generated here, so that's good to go. The second way that you can assign a username and password is actually in the records section on the doctor side. And if you participate in meaningful use or any other government reporting agencies, you might be familiar with the ARRA tab. There is a button in here where you can upload medical records. And when you click this, um, if you don't have a username and password assigned, the system is going to prompt you to add access. So you can also do it that way, whatever makes more sense for your workflow. Okay, so there's that. And let's see here. Um, to give the patients a username and a password, there's a couple of different ways that you can do it. Um, we already talked about word of mouth. Um, you could write it down for them. There is also a way that you can have the URL, the username and the password print out at the bottom of their invoice. If you would like that done for each invoice, you can come into admin and then invoices and you can check this box right here, include information on how to access the portal. And this is what's going to be printed out on the invoice footer. So you can customize that as needed. Um, so that way everything is going to print out. If you have a patient where you have not generated a username and password, when you print out the invoice, it's going to give you a pop-up window and it's going to let you know that it's removing this footer information um, because they wouldn't need this if they don't have a username and password. So it's just a gentle reminder um, that you can either acknowledge it or you can go generate it and then print the invoice out for the patient at that time. Okay, um, there's that. Also in the patient section under files again, there is a button to email portal access. If you have a Gmail account, you can set up so that way you can click email portal access and then through your Gmail, you can email a URL for the portal, the username, and the password directly to the patient. So there's that as well. Um, 
As far as what works best for your office, that's totally fine. You guys may want to experiment around with um, what method you like. I think printing it on the bottom of the invoice is a pretty popular um, way to do it and also emailing the portal access is uh, pretty quick and easy as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and look and see what is what the patient is going to see when they log into the portal. So, test. Okay, let's log in. Okay, so actually, give me one sec. There we go. Okay. So the first time that I uh, put in the username and password, that actually didn't have all of the options that are available for the portal. It was scaled down a little bit, which is fine. Um, but this one that I logged into actually has all of the different options available. So as a base, you're going to have messages. This is going to allow the patient to send you a message. And if we just do, um, Please contact me. So the patient can send you a message, and when they do, they can also attach a file. Um, they'll send you a message, and you're actually going to see that pop up in your tasks window. If we check for web messages, um, we would be able to see that the patient has sent us a message. Since I'm actually connected to a different account, it's going to um, show up in a, in, a different, um, in a different crystal, so I apologize about that. But that's where it would show up. Um, from there, what you would do is you would come into the patient section, and in files, we'll go to the online portal again. You can click on messages, and then you would be able to actually reply to any of the messages that the patient has sent. Or if you would like to generate a new message for the patient, you can actually do that here as well. Okay, so there's that. In the record section, this is going to have anything that you have uploaded for the patient, whether it be educational material, their medical records, their prescription, anything like that. So they can simply view it or they can download it or email it to themselves, whatever they choose to do with it. Okay, the log is going to display for the patient if they wish to see it any time that they have logged in or accessed their portal. Forms, if your office has online forms set up where their patient fills out their demographic insurance and medical history online before their visit, they can do this directly from the portal. Schedule is only going to show up if your office participates in schedule your exam. The patient can schedule an appointment right from here. Pay bills will allow the patient to pay their invoice if you have World Pay integrated. The account will allow the patient to assign a new password. Okay. They can do this themselves or they can call you. It's probably better if they do it themselves though. And then they can also log out. Okay. Um, for the online forms, the Schedule Your Exam or World Pay, if you are interested in any of these, you can go up to Support and then Request Support at the top of Crystal. Um, and then we can get you more information on those separate integrations. Uh, again, if you do not have these integrated, they are not going to show up on the patient portal. So that's good. Um, a couple things that are popular for offices to want to do, um, one of them is to upload the prescription for the patient. So I'll show you what that looks like really quick here. So this is how it shows up. And then when the patient clicks on it, as long as they have a PDF reader, it's going to pop up, pop open with the, um, with the prescription. Okay, so that's what it looks like. They can do whatever they want with that, print it, save it, view it, whatever. 
how you do that is there's two different ways. The first way is from the patient section in the prescription. When you click print prescription, there is a button to upload portal. It's as simple as that. Once you click it, it lets you know that it sent it and that's it. In the records, it's the exact same thing. In the prescription tab, once you print the prescription, there is an upload portal button. And this is just a confirmation that the RX was uploaded. Okay. Um, the second one is going to be uploading a medical record. So to do that in the records section, We're going to go to the ARRA tab, and then you can upload medical record, just like that. This is going to upload the medical record in PDF format, so it's going to have all of the fields that you have filled out. If you would rather use a Word template or a letter, what you'll need to do is use the PDF printer in order to do that. So. A quick rundown on the PDF printer is if you come up to File and then Print Options, you can create the Crystal PM PDF printer. It will tell you that it's going to take about 10 minutes. Once you have it installed, what you're going to do is I'm going to send our records to our Word template. It's going to take just a moment here. And this actually, while this is generating, this is going to work for not only a custom letter that you have, but it would work for an insurance verification from a website, um, patient information that you want them to have for conjunctivitis or pangolecula or anything like that. Um, pretty much anything that you could print to a normal printer and give the patient, you can upload to their patient portal for them to print it out or view it at home. So that's very nice. Okay, so once we have our Word template um, generated here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to File and then Print. And I'm going to choose the Crystal PM printer. And then Print. And what happens here is we get the add file to our test patient and we can just say exam summary. And then there is a button here that we can add the file, which means that it will save this as a PDF into the patient's file section and it will also upload it to their portal. So we can go ahead and click that and we'll save it. And then we can see here that the file has been uploaded to the patient portal. Okay, so as easy as that. Uh, if you wanna see what um, files or what documents the patient has access to on their portal, you can come into patient again. And we'll come into files, online portal. And then this is going to um, basically list everything that the patient has access to. So if you wanted to clean it up, you can click Add, Remove, and then it's going to open another window where you can remove the file, um, you can assign system documents. Um, all of these different options are included in the PDF uh, with much more information. So make sure to check that out if you want a full detailed um, rundown of everything that the portal offers. As far as that, um, that is pretty much the basics on the patient portal. If you do have any questions um, or any issues or anything like that, please let us know. Thank you.